Brad Gay. If you look at the first schedule of this bill, Madam Speaker, and I want to read it word for word so that nobody accuses me of bringing in uh, things that are not here. They are saying that the current staff, the current staff of NHIF, Madam Speaker, that they are eligible to apply for the positions advertised by the authority and may be considered for appointment where they are suitably qualified for the positions advertised. Now, Madam Speaker, you know there is a depletion of trust in this country. If people are already working for an organization, they were vetted and they are qualified, why would you subject them to a reapplication process, Madam Speaker? This is what is causing jitters within NHIF. These people, if they were competitively recruited, should just be automatically absorbed into the new fund, Madam Speaker. Because some of us get very jittery around uh, recruitment processes under this government. Because we've been told of the story of shareholding. Madam Speaker, many of us are not shareholders in this government. We've been told we cannot be given positions. What happens to the non-shareholders who applied and are working for NHIF in the event that they meet this, uh, the person who has been, the, you know, uh, what is it called, auditing, shareholding of people during the recruitment? So what we're saying, Madam Speaker, it should be clear that the people who are working for NHIF now, having been recruited and they know they are qualified, should automatically be absorbed into this fund. Let me proceed by saying, Madam Speaker, the second concern and I heard the majority leader speak about the people who are uh, elderly and have retired. Those people are not saying that the bill does not take care of them. They are saying they need some specificity. That in fact, when you are above the age of 65, even though you are eligible to uh, get, say, private insurance, we know because the prevalence of chronic and terminal diseases amongst that age group, from 65 uh, to 100, many of the private medical insurance uh, do not like to insure this age group, and most of the time, the premiums are very high. I know that because my parents are in that category and the premiums are extremely high, Madam Speaker. But I want to say that I, con I confirm here that I support the establishment. The order, Madam Senator Speaker, Chirarige. I did not interrupt Senator Cherarge. I don't know why he wants uh, to interrupt let's me. Let's hear what the point of order is. Mr. Speaker, and you need to protect me from Senator Abbas. Mr. Mr. Madam Speaker, sorry, understanding order 105, responsibility statement of fact, is it in order? for the Nairobi Senator and my senior brother, Edward Sifuna, Edwin Sifuna, sorry, sorry, Senator Edwin Sifuna, to indicate that this country is a shareholding country, uh, Madam Speaker, and yet is as a foreign country. Is it in order for him to cast as passions as per standing order number 105? And even further creating cheaters about the, the transition period under NHIF, Madam, Madam Speaker, is it in order? Senator Sifuna, you can clarify about the shareholding, about the debating on the category of the elderly. He is within his rights to debate what he thinks about that. Madam Speaker, it is a matter of public record that somebody as senior as the Deputy President of this Republic has said it openly that the government that is running this country is a private company with shareholding and that if you do not have shares or you have minimal shares, you get nothing. Madam Speaker, allow me to proceed because these are matters of, of public record that are even known and we should take judicial notice of them. Madam Speaker, the second concern that I, wa I had is with uh, regards Senator to benefits. Sifuna, Senator Sifuna, uh, Senator Chirarige, are you okay with the response that has been given? I'm not okay. But my job here is not to make him okay, Madam Speaker. This is a matter of public no. record that this clarified. House has taken judicial notice. Senator Sifuna, you were, you were to clarify. I asked you to but, clarify. Madam Speaker, you know, the, the Senator Sifuna has, is a practitioner of law. Kenya is not a private company. It's not a shareholding company. Is it on? Is it in order, Madam Speaker? This, those ones you can say in uh, public rallies and funerals. Madam Speaker, this is a house of records, and the president himself had said, even if it is judicial notice in CIA, that each and every Kenyan will be served by government regardless of how they voted. Is it in order for Senator Sifuna to bring statements that are made in baby showers and funerals to the floor of the house? Yes, Senator Sifuna. Madam Speaker, I don't know what about me uh, uh, looks like somebody who attends baby showers, but let me say this. You're wasting my time. Madam Speaker, the most critical concern I have, and I hope my time has been posted under Section 31. Madam Speaker, if you read the language of uh, the benefits under uh, uh, Section 31 and 32, it appears that there are, there's going to be different categories of packages that people are entitled to based on the premium they are paying. Now, the problem that I have, number one, this act does not disclose to us 
what tariffs are going to be applied to Kenyans in this particular new health scheme. We have not been told if it is going to be 2,000 shillings or 3,000 shillings. As opposed to the current situation where we know everybody pays the same amount of money. There is no clarity here and it is being left to the cabinet secretary to set that tariff. And the act says that every beneficiary shall be entitled to an essential health care benefits package. That is like what everybody else is, everybody is going to be entitled to is supposed to be a base package. We have not been told about the other packages. It's going to be a premium package for dynasties, and I'm sure this essential ben healthcare benefits package is for the hustlers. So let them, let them be more cl critical, uh, clear, Madam Speaker, about the benefits. We don't want to be sold hope. And then we are told, no, your contribution only entitles you to this, what are called essential healthcare benefits. If you want anything else, you have to add money. We want that clarity in the packages, and we want the clarity in the contributions. It cannot be left to the whims of the Cabinet Secretary. Madam Speaker, I want to finish uh, by saying that I am very happy with one provision here on uh, the establishment of an emergency fund. As SG of ODM, as a member of Azimio, we did promise that we were going to implement, if we got government, the provision in the constitution that entitles everybody to emergency health care. We have seen cases of people dying in ambulances here in Nairobi because the hospital that you've been taken to will not admit you until they know who's going to pay for that. Uh, uh, admission, Madam Speaker. So this is something that I would support the Emergency Chronic and Critical Illness Fund, and this money is going to be able to go to guarantee that the cost of emergency treatment, if you find yourself in an accident somewhere, maybe people don't even recognize you, you might have your, your premium insurance, private insurance, but people do not recognize you, or you are driving alone, you are unable to retrieve your card, they should be guaranteed that every person who's taken to any hospital in the country under emergency circumstances will receive Senator Abbas Sheikh Mohammed. Um, Honourable Speaker, thank you for giving the opportunity.